Greetings. I'm Mert Shane, pastor here at Keoki Chapel, and welcome to worship here on this fifth Sunday of Lent. It is great to have you with us as spring is springing, and we are preparing for the upcoming uh, Easter season. Let us begin with our call to worship. Whenever in life we turn toward God, we find God already turned toward us. In times of sorrow and weeping, as in gladness and rejoicing, in times of illness and pain, fear and loss, God is present, gracious, and good. Let us worship God with thanksgiving because God is present, gracious, and good. Praise be to God. Let us pray. Receive our hearts once again, O heart of all hearts. Break them open anew with your compassion. Wash them once more with your merciful, loving kindness. In these Lenten days, sow within our hearts the seeds of hope that can turn a valley of shadows into a garden of grace. Lead us onward into the newness of life that can only come from your heart. As we serve and follow you, may grace blossom in our work as we nourish others with words of courage and strength for the journey. We pray. Amen. For our children's sermon this morning, or today, I have a packet here of seeds. These happen to be seeds of pumpkin, field pumpkin. And so I would ask the children, uh, what do seeds represent? What, what good are they? Well, naturally, as we know, seeds are for planting. And Jesus told a story about grains of wheat and what we should do in terms of if we want to see growth in life, what we must do in order to achieve that. And so as we look at seeds, we think about planting, because if we didn't plant them, if we just left them in the bag, what would happen? Nothing. We wouldn't get any flowers, we wouldn't get any plants, no vegetation, they would just sit in the bag. But if we plant them, what possible things could happen? Well, there could be growth, especially if we plant them and then take care of them, we water them and they get sunshine. We can see all kinds of growth. And so this story today is all about growth and about making sure that we plant the right things. Because if we plant God's love and if we love others, then it will grow. If we don't do anything with our love, the love that God has given us, nothing will happen. It'll be just like these seeds in this bag. And so Jesus is teaching the disciples about and those around him about God's love and how we need to help others and show that love. So how would you show God's love? Well, you can do things. You can have acts of kindness, uh, making your bed, and cleaning up your room, setting the table, little things that you can do at almost any age to show your love to your parents. Possibly giving them a hug and telling them that you love them. That's all about showing God's love. And so I encourage you this week today to show God's love in all that you do. Let us pray. 
We thank you, O oh God, for our children, for their growth and development. Help them to take these lessons of planting the seeds and using them for to show your love in all that they do. In Jesus' name we pray. So my wife is looking forward to planting those seeds. As we come together for our time of prayer, I know that there are prayers of uh, within our community of people that have had accidents and those that are ill and uh, those that are struggling. We know that many of you are getting the vaccine and are feeling better about getting out and doing things. Uh, we also know that uh, some are at home and not feeling the greatest, feeling possibly depressed. And so we pray for them as well, uh, for their healing, uh, as well as we pray and give thanks for this new day and for the spring. So let us pray. in making special times in our lives 
just to be with you in love. Forgive and transform us in the, de in the desert of our sin. We pray in Jesus' name, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. As we continue to give God thanks, we thank you for submitting your offering and your donations for our special missions. Uh, last week we had an offering for uh, UMCOR, that is United Methodist Community, uh, Committee on Relief, uh, for their mission of helping others in times of distress. And so we give thanks for those offerings as well. So let us pray. Gracious God, you renew hope when we feel like most hopeless for ourselves. The conditions in our own lives and in the world. You have shown us in Jesus that there is more to come than what we presently see. We believe in this new life for ourselves, for the church, society, and all creation. With faith, we make our offering in Christ's name. Amen. Hello, everyone. Our gospel lesson today is from uh, the book of John, chapter 12, verses 20 through 33. Now there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida, in Galilee with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to tell Andrew. Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. The man who loves his life will lose it, while the man who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will, will also be. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my heart is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came, to, came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now is the time for judgment on this world. Now the prince of this world will be driven out. But I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all men to myself. He said this to show the kind of death he was going to die. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the gift of your holy scriptures, whose timeless truths always bring a relevant word to our ears. Prepare our hearts and minds with us ready willingness to hear its truth, heed its calling, 
and enact its lessons. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Our text today is taken from the book of Psalm chapter 51, verses 1 through 12. The story of the Psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions, wash away all my inequity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I, had, I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my inequity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of the word. It sounds like cleaning house. Oh yeah, we've had time during this, uh, some would say respite, uh, during this pandemic to do all kinds of cleaning and preparing as we deal with this Lenten season. But recognize in the scripture what, what messages are a part of our daily lives. Not only in the cleaning of what's around us, but in truth telling, how important it is to be truthful with ourselves and others, and especially to be truthful with God. And so in looking at the scripture, we need to do several key things that David is actually calling for us to do as he was doing. The first thing is we need to acknowledge the fact that we have been sinful. That yeah, we try to do the right thing, but many times we fail in the process. We weren't doing what it was that we were called to do. Recognize that God made us good. And somewhere along the line, we went bad. Almost like you think about fruit going bad. I often see how the bananas ripen at home and how sweet they are at different points in time, but after a while they can become rotten. And then we've got to do something different with them. Oh yes, yeah, some of you throw them away and others make the best of them. And so you take those bananas that are overripe and you make banana bread or some other Thing with them. And so we rejoice in your ability to do that. Our experience in life has shown us that 
we are not always bad people. But sometimes we make errors. Uh, sometimes it's all about how we are being. That is, what are we doing that's helpful and shows God's love? And what aren't we doing? Are we just fundamentally uh, conditioned? Uh, or is this a temporary thing? And so we need to acknowledge the fact that many times we do sin. We don't do the right thing. We say things and do things inappropriately. But we need to make sure that we confess those sins to God. And so recognizing that confession, then we need to ask God for forgiveness and renewal. Are we confessing uh, just out of confession? That is, we go through this ritual instead of actually recognizing what it is that God has asked us to do and what we haven't done. Are we confessing not to sin anymore, to have learned the lessons that are before us so that we don't keep making the same mistakes over and over again? Are we about changing our heart and not just changing rituals? Are we truly asking God for forgiveness or just for to help us make another excuse for not doing the right thing. So the third component is, are we truly changing our hearts? Are we cleansing our experience? Are we going to do things differently? Are we going to say things differently? Are we going to help others as we have been shown that's the way to go? Are we all about growing things or are we about killing things? It's disturbing to hear people wanting to kill others or actually doing that and then blaming it on something else. It's truly been challenging hearing about these killings lately of different people of color and how that impacts all of us. Oh yeah, the, some folks don't want to call it what it is. But it's something that all of us have to deal with. And we know what's behind it. And so we need to make sure that we carefully look at ourselves and what it is that we're doing and saying as we deal with life. Are we making excuses for our language? Are we making excuses for what it is that we're doing to ourselves and one another? Are we about helping and creating solutions are just continuing with the same old problems. How often have I reminded you that either you're part of the problem or part of the solution? And how many of you have sat quiet, sat on your hands, and done absolutely nothing, which is a part of the problem? Are you willing to make a statement? Are you willing to march? Are you willing to write letters? and tell others of your dissatisfaction with what is and how people are behaving? Are you a part of those that are microaggressors? That you are doing and saying things that are just like cutting to others, that are harmful and not helpful? Are you doing what God has asked you to do? Are you asking or acknowledging what is going on and asking for forgiveness and then trying to work with a clean heart? 
we need to make sure we discover what God has in store for us to do. What is God calling you to do to change things so that we might all prosper and grow and love? And so where do we go from here? Well, this scripture looks at the rejoicing when we are showing God's love, the love that God has shown us. And so how do we rejoice? And what is the scripture helping us to see? It's dancing. Oh yes, yeah, some of you don't dance as well as you used to, or as often as you used to, but you should be dancing as we have now upon spring. Dancing, watching the flowers grow. Dancing as the temperature rises. Dancing with the love that God has shown each of us so that we can spread that love to all God's people. I hope you will dance this week, dance this day, so that others might see the love of God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the many blessings you have given us. Help us to acknowledge our wrongdoings. Help us to ask for forgiveness. Help us to truly have a change of heart so that we might show your love in all that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want to share a different benediction with you. One that was shared with me this week. It was written by the Reverend Kathy McShane. and adopted from William Sloan Coffin's prayer titled, Risk Something Big for Something Good. Hear this benediction in prayer. May God bless you, keep you, be gracious to you. May God give you grace never to sell yourself or God short. Grace to risk something big for something good. Grace to remember that the world is now too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. So may God take your mind and think through it. May God take your lips and speak through them. May God take your hand and do good with them. May God take your heart and set you on fire. Amen. Go in peace. Be safe. Show God's love wherever you go, both now and always.